you're our master, you're a savior. Everything that we are is your Lord Jesus. We just want to say that we love you, God. And you're the reason that we live. We bless you, Jesus. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. You're just the very one for me. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me, God. You're the one for me. Help me sing, come and sing, yeah. You are the reason I live. Yeah. 
Millennial City, the place to be. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The Dominion Bandit is inside. That's why the Bible says, Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Confer the blessing of your life today. Yeah. I confer your mighty hand of blessing upon their lives. Yeah. Welcome to expand your world with Pastor David Willie. There is a word I want to leave with you. I want to show you the kingdom of darkness, what is going on, and then leave a word, a strong word God said I should leave, especially for. Everyone that God will use, everyone that is a leader, everyone that is pastoring, everyone that is leading, everyone that is going to be involved in the move of God, in leadership of any type. Now, now, first of all, look at Revelation chapter 12. Satan fell from heaven for violating the law of reflection. He wanted to become God. So verse 7, he fell. Okay. The moment he landed on the earth, the first program he did, and that is what he's going to do in these last days. And this is the man we're talking about. A new power block is going to be imagined on the earth that will champion the cause first, create a deceitful peace process, and end up achieving a peace program in the Middle East. Daniel said the man will use flattery. He is going to be a great diplomat. But he's going to end up with a global influence. And he's going to promise the Jews protection. But that peace is fake peace because that particular man hates the Jewish nations and hates the church. He's the son of the devil. Let me show you this guy. You know, so you will see that even the kingdom of darkness works by the principle of reflection. Revelation chapter 13. I stood on the bank of the sea and I saw a beast rise out of the sea. To get this, you need to read Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, and they did not prevail, nor was a place found any more for them in heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Anyway, I know that every time we read this, we use it to talk about the fall of Lucifer, the original fall. But this particular writing is not talking about that one. No. It's something that is going to happen in the last days. Somebody said to me, if he's not talking about the original fall of Lucifer, then how come there is war in heaven? It's not heaven where God lives. It is the second heaven. That's where these principalities operate. That's where they live. There are demons on earth. There are demons in the water. But there are highest ranking demons you heard about spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places god is going to sweep the whole atmosphere the whole galaxies and planets of all these forces and push all of them down to earth here and michael is the angel that is giving the assignment to execute that now satan falls he is living here with human beings before he visits and goes said concerning job i walk to and fro up and down because his throne is in the second heaven he has other powers that control the sea he has other ones that operate on the land watch the first thing he did when he arrived here is to raise a human being he raises two human beings just like the heavenly trinity when god initiated a program here he raised two human beings he, he 
Jesus shows up, John the Baptist shows up. And by operating law of reflection, those two people shook nation of Israel. God creates things in pairs. Satan broke this rule in heaven, fell. Now he's using it on earth. You will see it now. So he raises a man, the Bible calls prophetically the beast. Watch, watch as I show you. Revelation chapter 13, they brought John to the bank of the sea. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea. Having seven horns, ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet was like, he's describing the same thing that Daniel the prophet described. Let me give you the point that is. Verse 3. First, he sustains a mortal wound in battle. And then recovers from that wound, faking death and resurrection. Look at verse 3. A mortal wound means he was killed. Because there are nations that will give him problems. These nations that believe in freedom. If you read the book of Daniel, the man is going to face war, a lot of problems. The nations that still hold democratic values are going to fight him. And most of them are these western nations. Now, he was killed, but he gets back. And the time he survived that deadly wound is what confused the whole world. Because Satan arranged that as a means to deceive the world. Watch. Verse 4. Now, now verse 3 first. Verse 3. I saw one of his heads as if he had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Now, from rising from one country, he gains global influence. Verse 4. So, what happens here? The whole world, they worship who? Look at the man that raised this young man is behind the scene. Nobody sees the dragon. Satan has never come out openly. He uses human beings. He's behind the scene, but like Jesus pointed the whole world to the Father, this guy takes points the whole world to the dragon. And so they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? By this time, these western powers are not able to stop him again. There are three things working on the earth when you deal with the subject of the Antichrist. The Bible said the spirit of the Antichrist, that one has been in operation. Is this spirit that is causing gay movement, lawlessness on the earth, destruction of values and everything that is God word. Then second, he said, many antichrists. That means this man will not walk alone. There are a lot of agents and instruments that will be used. Then the Bible talks about the, the antichrist, the man. The dreaded world leader that is coming. Look at verse 2. One more time. Verse 2, one more time, I just want to show you something. Now, the beast which I saw was like leopard, his feet like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion. But watch, the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and what? Great authority. Nobody sees the dragon. That's Lucifer, the fallen angel. Nobody sees him. He, on the, from the behind the scene, transfers all his anointing, all his authority to this man. He is a human being that is possessed by Lucifer. Just like Jesus was an incarnation of the invisible God, Satan tries to pull the same trick, the same strategy on the world. This is somebody that used to work for the company in heaven. He has learned the strategies. And he wants to use it.
Now the dragon gets the whole world to worship him because one human being shifted the tide away from true religion, the worship of the living God, to the worship of the devil. One human being. But this human being is going to be helped by another beast, a second beast. Because that's how the law of reflection works. God will send a Moses and an Aaron. But the second beast is like the moon to the first beast. Why the first beast is like a moon to the dragon? Each one takes that other position so he can point. The first beast points to the dragon. He creates a new age, a new world religion. And they are preaching it already. But then it's going to become a global phenomenon. It's here already. Hmm. That's what the Antichrist, because that's why it's going to deceive the whole world. Because it sounds close to Christianity. They tell you there is already Christ in you. You don't need. They tell you that when you die, you see the light. Forget all these people that are telling you about heaven and hell. They take some biblical thing, twist it. They talk about love. They talk about believe in yourself. Believe in your gifts. Believe in whatever. And they deceive the world. But when you get behind the scene, is certain worship. Revelation chapter 13, I want to start winding up. Verse 11. See the second beast. And I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but spake like a dragon. Watch. This is going to be a minister of the gospel with a global influence. This imitates the lamb. Everyone says he has two horns like the lamb. He's going to come out and people will say, ah, say hey, he's so humble. He's like Jesus. He's like... And he will do it well to be able to win the heart of the world. But now, when he opens his mouth, is the same dragon that raised him. Let me tell you, I told you yesterday that there is a way to recognize people who operate the law of reflection under that God, and they went to recognize even Satan's own. Watch how they talk. They don't, these guys are so proud. There's something about them. They might be smooth speakers. They might be whatever. But the authority of, <laughs> of the almighty God, the authority of the son is on the mind. They take and give it to something else. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, watch this second base. What he do? Okay, the first is a political leader. The second is a religious leader. With politics, economy, and religion, Satan controls the world. Everyone said politics, eco economy, and religion, Satan controls the world. If we are going to get our job done, we have to look at that tango. The first one is a political leader, but he's going to actually reorganize the world economy. The second is a religious leader. See what his job is. The devil is copying the law of reflection. See what he does. Okay, we have the second beast who tries to imitate Jesus, but is actually a dragon. That's, you know what you call sheep, uh, wolves in what? Sheep clothing. Okay. Now, verse 12. And he exercises all the authority of what? who? First beast. Look. Remember, dragon hands all his authority power to the first beast. Now, here is this guy. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. And causes the earth. That's human beings on earth. And those who dwell in it worship the first beast. The first beast gets everybody to worship the dragon. Now, this second beast gets everybody to worship the beast. Whose deadly wound was healed? He fakes all this to get power. Fakes diplomacy to get power first. Fakes everything he needs to fake to get power first. Verse 13. Verse 13. 
and he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth it's going to happen be watching verse 14 and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do the sight of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Verse 15. And he was granted power to give bread to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast be killed. What is coming ahead now? is the worst persecution in the human history. <laughs> but Babylon has the religious angle, it has the political angle, it has the economic angle, it has the entertainment angle, it has all of them. Babylon the Great. This system of Satan, he wants to use to finish the age. number one comment thou shall not make any other god beside thou shall not make for yourself graven images and the place even said of any likeness of anything in heaven or the likeness of anything on earth under the heaven or the likeness of anything in the sea two group of people are going to have it hot in those days first the jewish people and christians who will refuse to worship this because they are the ones that will be killed One more verse, and I'll leave this alone. One more verse. Verse 16. 16 and 17. He causes all, watch the word, all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell except one has that mark on or the name of the beast or the number of his name and this one becomes very deadly because the problem is you can't buy you can't sell until when we come for next year come i'm going to be giving some guidelines how people so, are going to be surviving during this because the bible gave the escape routes too prophecy that prophesied also talks about but the bible was that before this man is given all this authority is allowed jesus will snatch the church away now but you have to know the believers that are going to miss the rapture and they are still genuine believers and they have missed the rapture because rapture is this issue about whatever is going to come in two levels the first resurrection rapture takes place those who misses but this time they have to pay they have to pay they have to pay they have to pay there's also a group that a group of thoughts that believe that the end time believers will be here when it happens anyway whenever i see groups arguing the important thing i tell them is be ready whether you believe we'll be here or that we are going to go before it arrives because the events are beginning to unfold they are coming in no penalty you're going to face more severe consequences and that is going to force people who don't do it to do it. Are there ways out? Yes. God is talking about God's people also having building alternative systems. <laughs> because a man that has a farm has a farm. Whether he can buy electrons or buy anything or not, he can eat. Remember, the Bible said those days will be short. And the Bible said all this will last only for seven years. that's what daniel said that's what the book of revelation said you don't throw away your your future only because of seven years because at the end of this same man will be destroyed that's what prophecy said this one he's claiming that he can survive bomb they are going to throw whatever and he won't survive it of course they say he's going to be captured alive and thrown into the lake of fire it's jesus that will destroy him He's trying to fake Christ. In 
these last days we need to keep God's people aware of what is happening. And this is where I bring a church to everybody that uses power, everybody that is in leadership, everybody, whether it's political leadership, economic leadership, spiritual leadership. You hear you have heard that power corrupts. And ultimate power corrupts ultimately. So it becomes a concern for me. How do I stay in leadership? Whether it's leadership of ministry, leadership of business, leadership of family, and not be corrupted by authority. And not be corrupted by anointing. I have seen anointed men get corrupt. How do you handle power and still be under control? Take note. All powers that build, all powers that are constructive are powers under strain. All powers that are destructive are powers out of control. You are getting anointed. The anointing of God fell this year like no man's business. Let me give you a warning. Lucifer was an anointed cherub. And he's now one, the head of rebellion. And he's going to be the chairman in hell. You are anointed. It doesn't exempt you from going to hell. You gain political power. It might even be a fast ticket. The purpose of power is justice administration. The purpose of leadership is service. Power is abused when it is not used to solve the problem, to serve. Whether your spiritual power or what or money you heard what god is saying god is going to put billions in the hands of people he's going to put all kinds but, I, but how do you handle billions and not lose your soul and not lose control over your life that is the final element the law of reflection that you need to understand and so i took this question to the Lord in prayer. And I asked him, please teach me. I need to understand. How come Jesus had the anointing without measure and he never had problem with pride? How come the Holy Spirit that is the power of God still something? But Satan and his little beast, they have control. The power of the devil is power that is not restrained. That's why it's destructive. See, if your car loses its brake, that power that is meant to serve, help, drive you from one place to another can crash and kill everybody. There are nuclear reactors that can generate power and give electricity to a whole city power different things that nuclear reactor can break down like what happened in japan and release nuclear radiation that destroys lives causing cancer causing tumors an aircraft is such a very powerful that man has created you enter it within hours it takes you across the ocean that aircraft is engine breaks down it can take hundreds of people and crash them into the ocean and destroy their life. When you lose control, you become a dangerous man to yourself and to the people you lead. When you learn power, without being under control, you become a dangerous man to your generation. This is what you have just read. The reckless use of power. So I threw a question, and I need to read this for you. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. I need to show you this. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably. There is a way to serve God is accepted. And how do you do that? Is to serve God with reverence and what? Godly fear. Why? Because our God is a consuming fire. God is more deadly than nuclear weapon. Whenever the power of God loses control, he leaves ashes behind. He burns everything on his part. It happened to the city of the uh, city of Sodom and Gomorrah. This happens when God gives way for his anger to flow. All powers out of control become explosive power. You see an aircraft explode in the air. You see a catapult and explode. You see a nuclear weapon explode. At that moment, it becomes destructive. A lot of harm is caused. And I ask the Lord, I say, you are the ultimate power. How do you keep yourself in check? So that every leader, even me as a leader, needs to learn. I said, the Holy Ghost, Jesus they all line up in reflection. Who controls you? How does God Almighty control himself? So that he becomes a blessing instead of a destructive influence in the universe. How are you controlling yourself? I ask him, but with reverence. Please, I need to know. And the Lord gave me an amazing thing that blew my mind. And he told me, order your life that way. There are preachers who will go to hell. There are people who will do miracles. On that day, I'll tell them, I never knew you. Learn this secret. You will protect yourself, protect your mandate, and finish this race, and come and receive a crown and a reward. And I said, Lord, you are the ultimate power in the universe. How is your power restrained? And he said, the power of God is controlled by the love and the mercy of God. What restrains God's power is his love and mercy. You know the Bible said the love of God constrains us. The way the love of God, the love of God is shed abroad in our heart and that love is supposed to act as constraining power. God is constrained and held back by his love i don't know whether this is an electric wire whether it's connected to power or not but look at electricity i'm touching electricity it's not doing anything to me look at electricity that has power to fry me here now look at it i'm touching it why there's something here called insulator it is this insulator that made this power that can be very destructive now very useful and it's a blessing instead of instead of that's what the transformer does when a trauma blows up and the electric power surges into your home, it's going to destroy all your appliances, blow your TV, blow up everything because that power has lost control. There are ministers that are loose cannons. So the Lord said, You see, you see the reason. I put ministers in hell is for exercising power and developing the fruits of the same character. He said, What restrains the power you carry are the fruits of the spirit love, meekness, patience, all of that. You have to have patience for people, you have to have meekness. The Bible says, When somebody has fallen, you want to remember. That you could also be tempted. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering yourself that you could also be tempted. The fruit of the spirit. God's power is restrained by his divine nature. And it is that nature that if you don't bear, you don't resemble God. A power, you can see Satan can fake 
the power. Satan can do miracles. How we are going to know that you are not fake because you are doing miracles is the fruit that you bear. He said, by their fruit you shall know them. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. There are fake ministers and they are doing miracles and they are confusing the public. No. No. God's power. God is a consuming fire. If not for mercy, that he exalted mercy above judgment. Exalted his love above his wrath. You and I cannot come near him. But we come near and we are touching the glory of God and we are not dead. So the Lord said to me, there are three ordinances I set in motion to control myself and my ability to exercise power. I said, explain them to me. He said, one of them is that heaven is governed by divi the divine nature, the, 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 the nature of God. He said, I will never do anything that contradicts my character and my nature. I said, okay, I get that one, so I'm going to develop the fruit of the Spirit, and that will help me. I said, but is there another thing that can help? He said, yes. He said, the second thing I did to keep me in check is that I subjected myself to under the same constitution and words that I made, laws that I made. Let me tell you what he means. God exalted his word above his name. God submitted the first man to institute the rule of law is the almighty God. He submitted himself to his own words. So he says, be ye holy for I the Lord your God. I am what? He said, the things I command people to do, I put myself in it first. Because any government that obeys his law will not make bad laws. I don't think you heard what I said. Any person that says standards that obey will not make the bad ones. You will make the ones that are good for humanity. You see why nations like America have been blessed so much by following this model. What we call the rule of the law. So the kingdom of God operates by the rule of principles. God never violates his word. He said, love your wife as Christ loves the church. If I don't do it, don't do it. But if he's real, you will see that I'm doing it first. Now, he's teaching us to be humble and meek because Jesus, who was in the form of God, came and humbled himself to the point of disgrace like a servant. So, he said, if humility you think is a serious, look at it, I'm doing it. Yet, I'm the one that is in the ultimate power that nobody can control, but I'm doing it. So, what else are you saying? He's telling us to go on mission. God went on mission. Jesus went on mission. The Holy Ghost is on mission. And he's telling the church, you are a missionary institution. You can't sit down. The ogre has gone. It's after the Trinity explained, the, explained this thing to me. I saw, oh my God. So we who are general I think our job is to sit and be sending people. We are the first to go. I am the first to go. I said, oh my God. This is Christian leadership is completely opposite of the way human beings understand leadership. God leads by example. He said, the, when I make the laws, I test it with myself. If it's not good, then I know. So I don't put it on people. He said, I have. He said, that's why. What it means is that you can take me to court. I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, haven't you heard that you can come and plead your case? Because if you can show something from my word, I will be forced to obey it. In prayer, the power to influence heaven is to be able to come to the throne of God on the basis of it is written. God cannot violate his word. The scripture cannot be broken. Heaven and earth can pass away. But my word, he said, cannot pass away. 
So I said, Lord, but you made so many promises. How do you now help yourself to keep them? He said, I watch over my word to what? To perform it. He said, that's what I do. Oh. I watch it. So that's why in prayer, if somebody raises something, like one time he got angry and he wanted, this power can destroy it. He wanted to destroy the children of Israel. Moses reminded him of some things he said. And the Bible said, and God repented. Everyone say, say it with me, God can repent. I don't think you, you, you believe me well. Say it, even the Almighty God can repent. But that his commitment to keeping his word is what makes him the God that can be trusted. He's a God of in, impeccable integrity. I said, Lord, help me. Then he now said, the third thing that controls me, that checks me, is covenants conventions treaties he said i come and sign treaties with lesser powers that i should have been controlling dominating i sign treaties to restrict my use of power you see me making covenants with different people in the bible that restricts me so that if i get angry that covenant restricts me If there was a covenant between him and Sodom and Gomorrah, or between him and somebody there, the way his anger burned like fire and wiped the city, he, he, there would be restraint. And I said, Lord, explain to me how covenant restrains you. He said, superpower nations, you see it, sign conventions, treaties, with nations they can easily defeat. International conventions are international covenants you, between nations. After the first world war, they signed a covenant that created the League of Nations. Power out of control is dangerous to the man that bears it and to the people he leads. That's why Jesus gave us the new covenant. When you take communion with your brothers, there is blood between you and that individual. I can't get up tomorrow and maltreat or do anything. Whether it's in business to harm you, I cannot do it. There are consequences. Because that's why I drank blood. Jesus had to do that so that he won't treat us and boss. He wants to be our savior, our brother, our friend. So he makes covenant with the church. So he can be husband to the church. Because a made husband head of the wife, but God said, husband, what must control you is love for wife, for your wife. Love your wife. If not, you become power out of control. You become a little Hitler in your house. You become a dictator. When you love her, the decision you're not made is going to be motivated from that. Because you are thinking about her well-being. Anybody who wants to do ministry without any form of submission, anybody to cover you, you want to be the devil's the devil's twin brother. You want to be his subject. Anybody who doesn't want anybody to ever correct you. Anybody to ever. You are looking for trouble. You want to go to hell. It has destroyed a lot of powerful people. God signs treaties. So one day he was angry again. He tries to let his power flow without control and destroy the whole of the Jewish nation. And he tells Moses, step aside. 
these people have annoyed me and I'm going to wipe them out and I will raise another nation for you Moses turns and said what about the covenant the treaty you signed with Abraham you told him that his children will leave that land what are you now saying and they said and God repented if you understand covenant you can influence heaven oh lift up your hands lift up your hands say father open my understanding give me this truth help me to lay hold of these things that's why marriage is built on covenant church is built on covenant and anything that will go along by will be on is built on some form of common covenant relationship convention treaties and even businesses you should build it that way let me say this in conclusion have you noticed the first thing that dictators do because governments that rule nations are restrained every good government can i say it again all good governments use restrained power they are restrained by the constitution they are restrained by the national assembly they can be restrained by the courts to have political power over people the first thing that god almighty requires is that you must sign a social contract with the people stating how you're going to use that power for their benefit and service and then that contract will also demand what the people will do in return they must obey the government they will respect the government that it is on that basis that god made the ten commandments if you read the ten commandments the first four articles is how we are to obey god not worship another god those things observe all the things six more of the content of the ten commandments is the benefits for people thou shall kill because god doesn't die his human life is trying to protect thou shall not steal he's staying protect properties somebody walks and then they live in and buy a car or buy an, don't take it for him by force by armory or by political power don't use political power to rob somebody of his thou shall not commit adultery if somebody marries a wife stay away from him in those days kings when they come they see a beautiful woman they will plan to assassinate the husband or kill the husband to take the wife they will take your wife if you resist they kill you god say you cannot do it did you see the day david did it in the bible he took somebody's wife a man in power even though he was god's the man god loved god said you are going to die the first judgment is death. The second judgment is that the sword will not depart from your family line. David falls and repents in Psalm 51, cries out, and God said, okay, he sends the prophet back. You are not going to die, but still, somebody will pay in your family line because you insulted me. Absalom dies. Adonijah dies. And his three strongest children dies to pay for the blood of one man god took three people for one man because that's justice even though david was his friend you see what god is saying is that power that is exercised for good must be restrained by patience by love for people by humility it must be restrained but beyond the fruit of the spirit it must also be restrained that's why government can be sued in all good nations but whenever you see bad government the first thing they do you see what the first thing dictators do they suspend the constitution that's the first thing military court the first thing they suspend the constitution why they want reckless power they don't want control so they now want to rule by decrees they can do anything and nobody can shoot them anywhere that is how satan operates you see all this anointing falling money is coming to your hand though but the lord is talking to me and he's telling me teach these people i'm going to honor them i'm going to exalt them but if you don't teach them many of them are going to fall into the same trap as lucifer and many that have gone before balance your anointing with humility balance it with character 
balance your authority by setting boundaries for yourself like God did for himself. Make yourself accountable. Balance your world with a lot of service. You should have a lot of things you do for people. Social responsibilities. Things you do. At least a portion of your money, apart from using a lot to fund the gospel and all that, also create a portion. And you used to touch needs. That is what is going to make that money a blessing. That at the end of the day, you have wealth and, not, and miss hell and not go to hell. The rich man's problem in the story of rich man and Lazarus is that Lazarus sent the rich man to hell. When God gives you money, he puts a Lazarus near your gates. What you do with him will decide your eternal destiny. You heard Pastor Victor saying it, that giving is a command from heaven. You don't do it, they put you in hell. Jesus has already told a story in the Bible about the rich man. God has no problem with wealth. But when he blesses you, there are certain things he expects. Every year you set goals for yourself. I'm going to pay school fees. I'm going to do this. I'm going to help this poor family put food on it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to create such things. Love in action that helps you stay in check. And the almighty God will keep blessing you. You will keep rising. You will see that your sunlight will never go down. Because you are functioning according to the divine order. Which is a law of reflection. Bow down your heads. Let's pray. Grace to serve God acceptably. That's what the scripture said. Is with reverence and godly fear. The Lord said to me, everybody in leadership must be regulated by the fear of God. Everybody in leadership must be regulated by fear for the ultimate power. That there is another power that can judge you later. If you abuse that privilege that God gave you. Must be regulated by the fear of God. He said the way to serve God acceptably is to serve him with fear and reverence because our God is a consuming fire. My grandmother used to tell me, he said, God is like Mount Everest. As you climb it, you have to respect it because many have fallen off from there and been shattered to pieces. And I want to say to us, even though we can touch electricity, you cannot play with it. Take it for granted. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Don't take the love of God for granted. God is still a consuming fire. Even as I'm holding electricity, it still has power to shock. But this is what is covering it. For mercy has been exalted over judgment. That's why God restrains his anger. Restrains himself. Learn to restrain your anger. Learn to restrain your authority. A wise man said that if you are really powerful you don't use more than 25 percent of your authority you don't use more than 25 but how much power you have let's talk to him for grace you're going to be a blessing to this generation i see the lord talking to me but you will know how to exercise that power is given for service for service the same thing with the anointing is given so we can go and save souls and redeem the nations. Father, we honor you. We honor you. Give us this grace, like the scripture said, to serve you acceptably. To serve you with fear and reverence. To serve you with godly fear and reverence. Help all of us to get our life under control. You're a married woman. Submit to your husband. You're a leader. Have a covering on your head. We remember your covenant with us. We remember We 